This is chapter 12, part two, antifungals. A fungus um, is a mycotic agent or a my, uh, mycotic, which is fungal. It range, funguses range from single cell organisms like yeasts to multi-branching communities like this fuzz here or this mushroom. They're classified into two types when we're talking about uh, funguses on the animal. It can be topical or superficial, which affects skin and mucous membranes, including your GI tra tract, or they can be systemic, which affect the blood, the lungs, or the CNS. I've also seen um, fungus infections through the blood into the bone. A dermatophytosis is what? Roundworm. Dermatophytosis is roundworm. Okay. So uh, we also have histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, cryptococcosis, coccidiomycosis, candidiasis, sporotrichosis, and aspergillosis. You should have a basic understanding of where and when we see some of these and kind of what they look like when we see this in animals. We have to know a little bit about fungal anatomy. A sterile is a steroid which has lipid-like solubility. Ergosterol is a sterol that makes up the cell membrane of fungal organisms, whereas a cholesterol is a sterol that makes up the cell membranes of animals. Now this is important to realize because a lot of the stuff that we use to kill or to keep funguses from growing affect the cell membrane of fungal organisms, not cell membranes of animal organisms. We characterize fungus, uh, fungicides or fungus sats. We characterize medication as either fungistatic or fungicidal, much like we do with antimicrobial, any antimicrobial. So they're either going to retard the growth or they're going to kill the fungus. Dermatophyte testing medium or DTM is like this. They're used to culture topical fungal infections. The medium often contains a phenol red indicator. This is a dye that will turn red as the dermatophyte grows and produces these alkaline metabolic products. It's a pH indicator. Now, let me point out that a fungus, a dermatophyte is not the only fungus or the only organism that produces alkaline metabolic products. So if you see a red coloring here, do not automatically think that it's due to a, a dermatophyte. You do need to look at it under the microscope to see what it is. The first drug we're going to talk about as an antifungal is nystatin. It's extremely toxic to internal tissue, but we can use it on mucous membranes, mucous membranes including, including all through the GI tract. Okay, and we can use it on skin. So panelog cream can be used in the ear, can be used on the skin, can actually be used on the mucous membranes of the nose down the throat. It is generally fungistatic. It attaches to the sterile of the cell, the ergosterol um, of the fungal organisms. Clinical activity, topical administration, it is poorly absorbed systemically. So if we lavage the oral cavity or the vaginal cavity or the GI tract, okay, um, we can kill these plaques of uh, funguses. Um, so, and it will stay within that cavity. It won't be absorbed into the rest of the body. So that's good. This is GI candidiasis, these white plaques throughout the intestinal tract. Um, and this is really commonly seen in humans uh, as well as birds and can be really anything. Funguses grow there. It's typically not species specific. Some side effects would be anorexia, vomiting, but most are uncommon. So we don't see a lot of side effects with uh, nystatin. Ketoconazole and myconazole. These are the two most commonly drugs used in this class as an antifungal. Ketoconazole is excellent. It's available both in oral and topical pre preparations. Remember, we also use ketoconazole for what endocrine disorder? Cushing's disease, okay? We use it to treat Cushing's disease. Um, there are no VET-approved products, so we have to be very um, aware that this is used off-label. These can have a delayed onset of action, about 5 to 10 days. So if we have a large fungal systemic infection, oral administration is well absorbed, so we use it to treat fungal and yeast infections of many species that are systemic. Side effects for ketoconazole involve nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, 
hepatoc hepatotoxicity, so liver disease in cats. We do not want to give to pregnant animals because it can cause stillbirths and birth defects. Myconazole is great with dermatophytes, a ringworm. It's not well absorbed in the GI tract, so we're going to use it as a topical preparation. So on the mucous membranes, we can give it orally, uh, but it's not going to get into the rest of the body. So we're going to use it for candida and dermatophytes. The toxic reactions will be dose dependent. We'll see tachycardia, arrhythmias, fever, nausea, and thrombophlebitis. Griseofulvin is an antifungal. It's primarily used to treat dermatophytes, um, superficial fungal infections like ringworm. It has no antibacterial activity. It is fungistatic. It's usually used in dogs, cats, and horses, often known as fulvacin. Um, it is administered orally in the form of a tablet or powder. We have uh, target tissue concentrations high in skin, claws, and hair. So if you have a fungal infection of the skin, of the claws, or the hair, this is one thing to use. It's gr the absorption is greatly enhanced with a fatty meal. So if you have to use it with horses, typically we want to use something like um, uh, an oil, uh, like olive oil or something like that to get it into their system. Treatment usually six to eight weeks or until we have a negative culture. So a long bit of treatment with any antifungals. It is metabolized by the liver and conjugated with glucuronic acid. So who has lower levels of glucuronic acid? So we have to use caution when using griseofulvin in cats. Now we're going to talk about some disinfectants and antiseptics. So this is going to um, uh, inactivate viruses and destroy disease-producing microorganisms. Disinfectants are used on inanimate objects. Disinfection time is the time required for a particular agent to produce its maximum effect. Antiseptics are used on live tissue to destroy microorganisms. Disinfectants are used on inanimate surfaces. Alcohols. Ethyl and isopropyl alcohol work through protein coagulation and dissociation of membrane lipids. They are bactericidal and tuberculocidal and effective against some viruses, but they are not sporocidal and they're, um, they're not active against fungi. Alcohols do not penetrate organic material. This means if you have a lot of dirt off first and then use the alcohol as an antiseptic. It takes about um, one minute to be um, completely antiseptic. So we can use it for disinfection of thermometers and instruments and antiseptic skin preparation or spot disinfection. It can corrode metal and be drying to the skin. Chlorines and iodines. These inactivate pathogens by oxidizing free sulfhydryl groups on bacterial enzymes. Chlorines are bactericidal, they're great against viruses, and are fungicidal and tuberculocidal and less highly diluted. Iodines and iodophores are bactericidal with great activity against viruses. Um, they're fungicidal, tuberculocida, and are effective against bacterial spores. Quaternary ammonium compounds. These are cationic detergents. Okay, we've heard, seen quaternary ammonium compounds as far as atropine and glycopyrrolate go, um, but these are used as detergents. They dissolve lipids in the cell walls and membranes and are active against gram-positive bacteria specifically. They are bacteriostatic, only bacteriostatic at high dilutions, but spores, viruses, mycobacteria, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa are relatively resistant. So as you can tell, this may not be something we're going to grab for to, um, to use as a disinfectant. Organic debris, hard water, anionic soaps, and detergents inactivate these quaternary ammonium compounds. So not only do you have to clean the surface, you can't use hard water, soaps, or detergents in order to clean it first. This is a quaternary ammonium compound. If you've been around the business long enough, you know that Rocal was one of the first disinfectants that we used, but they are not effective against some common viruses like parvovirus. So this is why we had more parvo. I'm not sure really we had more parvo um, before. Um, but uh, this, is, this was not effective. Bleach is the best thing to use against parvo. 
The guanide compounds, chlorhexidine is the most common disinfectant. Um, it's also known as Novasan. In high dilutions, it's bactericidal, fungicidal, active against enveloped viruses like feline infectious peritonitis virus, feline leukemia virus. Uh, other viruses, spores, and mycobacteria are relatively resistant, um, but it is pretty good uh, when we use it in surgery. Uh, these both are surgical scrubs. They also come in solutions, which are a little bit um, safer for uh, antiseptics to on, on live tissue. So these can be used to disinfect surgical instruments, anesthetic equipment, kennels, and available as a surgical scrub and tea dip. So we have tablets, oral solution, lubricating jelly, um, so, um, just a regular solution, surgical scrub, and virosan solution. If you have any questions about funguses, antiseptics, or disinfectants, please bring those, write them down, bring them to class. I'd love to answer them for you.